Shit is lit. Just take a look at the drip. You boys don't get fired in this. Roll a dopey, I'm high as a bitch. Wait, it's lit. Get that little bitch a little tip. Now she wanna suck on the dick. She wanna catch all of the drip. Drip, drip. Pull up and I'm loading the clip. New bitch here, stay on my hip. Niggas talking, they not with this shit. Catch a body, you might just get hit. But lately, been all about drip. New designer, just look at the fit. And I just blew a bag on my bitch. You got caught, but you don't got the drip. You get money, that's some type of myth. I can blind you, bitch, look at the wrist. For that bag, and I might take a risk. Don't get crushed, cause you can't buy the bitch. Pass the Henny, I'm trying to get lit. Trying to get out my body and shit. Welcome back to the Nation. This is Anything of You podcast with Chris and Drew still. I got my main man, Chris England. Just kidding. Drew England, my co host. Drew, how you doing? What's up, man? Uh, just excited, man. Uh, I think we're all, I don't know about you, you're over in Albuquerque, but uh, I know me and Deshaun, we're kind of snowed in, being in the in the uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas area. So, uh, yeah, we're just chilling. So, man, it's chilling. just dusty right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we have number 23. Linebacker at the University of Oklahoma, Deshaun White. How What's you doing, up? man? What's up, man? I'm good, bro. Like I said, or like he just said, man, snowed in, got an off day, away from Smitty. Life's good today, you know. <laughs> yeah, life is great. Yeah. Man. Does it mean though that uh, you know it's not a day off? I'm sure you guys got some uh, some plans to uh, make it up, right? Man, we got plans to make it up. I already took my uh, little defensive quizzes for the day. I had to do my. Uh, study all the new playbook and stuff like that so that's awesome yeah. so Deshaun you were a four-star recruit in the state of Texas a U.S. Army All-American tapped in at number 10 recruit in the state of Texas by 254 Spoots tallied 274 tackles 26 for loss and seven sacks a handful of passes defended four fumbles three forced over your final three seasons you chose Oklahoma over Oklahoma State TCU, Texas, Texas A&M, and others. But the first thing I want to ask you is, what was it like playing high school football in the state of Texas? Because you have these great schools like Allen and just all across the board in that Dallas DFW area. Talk about, like, your favorite memories in high school and then your recruiting story and why you ultimately chose to come to OU. Um, man, where do I start? First off, uh, Texas high school football, like, I'm going to always back it up and root for it because it is it is different. Like, you could tell um, – I don't care what, what my teammates got to say here. Like, Texas high school football, that's the best football there is in high school. And it's really not close. Um, but, no, my, my recruiting story was actually kind of crazy. Um, it wasn't crazy. It just took – it wasn't smooth. It took too long. Um, I remember when I had made my commitment video, I had made two different videos, one for Texas A&M, one for OU. And this was prior to my uh, senior football season. And so um, – what I really wanted to do was just drop it before the season get over with so I could focus on the season because, you know, I had all these big goals, being All-American, da, 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 doing all these things. So, um, obviously, the first video that I dropped was my Texas A&M uh, recruitment video or commitment video. Um, and I can just remember, like, literally, like, two days later, just having, like, the worst gut feeling ever. Um, and... You know, I just kind of – I told my mom we waited out, see what happened. Um, obviously, the things with Coach Sumlin happened and that coaching staff was out of there. So, um, I mean, like I said, since that second day, I kind of had the feeling in my gut that it was like – that's where I wanted to be was was Oklahoma. So, um, I told my mom, got down to the Army game. I mean, I had actually silent committed to Coach Riley on like October 30th. And didn't get to announce it until like January 6th, just trying to, you know, kind of ease my mom over because, um, you know, she's really big on loyalty. And, and when you say you're going to do something, you do it. And so um, it took a while, but, you know, we got we got here where I'm at today. So uh, everything happens for a reason. No, it really does. It's amazing the way that life, the journey that it takes you as Man. far as just your path. No it's doubt. fun to see. So once you got to OU, what is it like in the day of a student athlete? I mean, start to finish. Is yeah. it is it crazy? Do you get used to it? Is it different every day, you know? And what advice would you give to some high schoolers out there that may be watching this video from the area you grew up in or anywhere across the world on how to manage the load of being a college athlete? Yeah, um, it's definitely a tedious schedule. Um, it's going to demand a lot out of your time. Uh, you really just got to, 
my thing um, that I feel like I'm really learning this year um, at the age of 22 is to, uh, you really got to be comfortable doing uncomfortable things. Like, so a lot of things that you might not want to do um, in most cases are the things that are probably best for you to do in circumstances of like um, just buying into yourself, you know, and in the terms of, you know, bettering yourself. So um, I could think back to a few years ago, like me not wanting to be in class all the time. Well, me going to class all the time is a thing that like speaks to my consistency as who I, who I am as a person. And, you know, um, as a young guy, you kind of look over little stuff like that, but um, it's, it's those details and those small things in this game that will take you to the next level. Cause you get here, everybody's got talent. You know, everybody was this, this and that in high school, four and five star this, you know? And so you got to find something that's going to set you over the top and it's going to be the details. So that's definitely, definitely the biggest thing. See, that's what I try to, you talked about how just Texas high school football is different. And that's what I try to tell people growing up in Texas. It's like, look, like states like Arizona, stuff like nothing knocking kids all across the world. You don't play, if you're a four-star recruit, you're the best player on the field at any given night. Texas high school football, there are multiple four and five star and three star. <laughs> See, nah, it's no, like, no. You're there not the best on my team. On the field. Like, Every week it was like, okay, they got this guy, this guy, this guy. We got this guy, this guy. You know, it's just that's how it is. Man. No, it's it's honestly clear. Like like you were saying, I don't know how to describe it to people unless you just go see it. Mm-hmm. Like, go no. watch the state six A game at Jerry World, and that's the only way I can know how to it's, describe it's, it to you. It's damn near like a different pace of game. Like, it's yeah. different from the rest of the high school football paces, you know. And then college obviously takes it to another level, but of course, yeah, it's yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It I've had a chance to go to a few few games down down there and and experience that a little bit, but you know, I I grew up playing. Well, I played in two different states. I played in Oklahoma, and then I moved to South Carolina uh, my junior year of high school, and, and got to experience the East Coast uh, and all that stuff. There's some good talent out there, but man, I just I, as as much as it pains me to say it, you know how how much we love to hate Texas. Yeah. High school football in the state of Texas is 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 legit. You've had over the years, you know, you could just name off countless, countless, you know, NFL talent athletes. More most recent for us, you know, guys like Kyler Murray, um, you know, tra- uh, Pat Mahomes, those guys, those type of guys. They, they they you know they came out of the state of Texas. So like it or not, man, there's a, there's a ton of talent that that comes out of Texas. So. And we we're grateful that you uh, you you listen to your gut and you you came to OU instead of uh, you know being an Aggie. So Man, I'm I'm grateful too, dog. I'm grateful too. Yeah. So um, not a lot of people know this, um, but you know, uh, as we talk NIL and and stuff like that, you actually have an NIL deal. Uh, talk about your uh, your relationship with uh, with Horns Down Shop, and then more specifically uh, Horns Down OU, and and how all that came about. Yeah. Um. Actually, they just hit me up probably um, towards the beginning of the season said that they wanted to do a merch thing um showed me some examples of the shirts and I was like oh yeah we got to do this uh it was really easy because whenever I told my mom about it she gave me a quick easy and that was like you know once mom puts the, the okay stamp on it it's good you know so um I mean we got some new pretty cool shirts we got a bring the boom shirt uh people are really liking those and then there's the not done yet which is sort of kind of the you know it's kind of the vibe right now with our I can kind of say our entire team, you know, because I feel like it's a little dark horse right now. You know, people are kind of saying what they got to say about this, this, and that. But, um, you know, right now we're just kind of head down working. Like, literally can't wait to get back on the field, yeah. you know. Well, seeing all these hype videos and everything that's that's going on on Twitter and Facebook and all that sort of stuff, man, it's, it's got Sooner fans uh, chomping yeah. at the bit. We're excited to see – what you guys, uh, what you guys come out? We know you're working hard and stuff like that, Smitty and all that. But uh, yeah. Um, so talk us through, like, you know, because you've been at OU a while now. Talk us through a typical game week, like game day atmosphere. I know us as fans, we see it from the stands, but talk about it from a player's perspective. How loud does it get down on the field, and and that energy that that the fans bring? Yeah. Like, how, how do you guys? You guys feed off of that, obviously. Just talk about that and that, and then um, you know. What what it's like, you know, running out of the tunnel in front of ninety thousand uh, fans? No, it's man, it's so special. You know, it's one of those things that every time I run through the tunnel, I run to the end of the end zone, and I just thank God for the experience. Just the 
the time because it's like, for one, it's not going to last forever. And it's such a, it doesn't happen all over the country. You know, there's not a lot of fans that go that hard for their university. There's not a lot of places that even have a reason, you know, to do that. So just to be in a situation like that, you know, I'm super grateful. Um, but I really, I really kind of think back to, to Perion's hit and just how, man, yeah. That was, we, for both of us, we were sitting in two different parts of the stadium. Mm -hmm. I was in, my, my tickets are in the north end zone. Um, but, you know, that Nebraska game, that was, it was hot. It was, you know, stuff like that. But then, uh, you know, the, through that year, I think we just, it was, uh, you know, we were almost kind of sitting on the edge of our seats a lot of times and, and waiting for big plays like that. And, man, I'll tell you what, it was, that was, that was, that was, you know, that was, that was one right there. That was, that was Iowa State, wasn't it, right? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say Iowa State. Yeah. So I was, I was in the student <laughs> section. I'll throw this out there. It's, I guess I'll make this post. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was in the student section, like row six. I was right behind Iowa State's bench, right where the quarterbacks were going up. Brock yeah. Purdy just got nailed, went to fourth down. They kicked it. We had the ball. So Brock Purdy was on the sideline trying to, like, you know, like knock it off, like shake it yeah. off. He was passing the ball, and I yelled, Brock, you're trash. <laughs> and he turns, and we lock eyes, and I was like, Oh, yeah, I got I real quick. Yeah. I got real quick. That's good, bro. Yeah, I didn't expect him to look at me or like even yeah. like you know because that's why I, we wanted to ask like, what's that like? Like, do you notice mm -hmm. that kind of stuff? Because obviously Brock did, but when you're on your bench and you're sitting there, like good or bad or indifferent, do you notice that stuff of what fans are saying and like how do you not let that get to you if it's negative? Um. We we'll definitely notice that stuff. I think that that's one thing that um, just as leaders, we kind of have to attack together as a group, just keep another group locked in. Um, I can think back to like the Oakland State game. That was one game where the, the chirping over there, it was just, it was a lot. It was a lot, you know, and the guys kept turning and looking, looking, looking. And it was one of those things like at the end of the day, what the fans have to say it really doesn't matter um, to do with the outcome of the game and, you know, for your performance. So it's one of those things like, if it feeds into you and you can talk your trash and get back in there and do your thing, like, do it. But if not, then you got to move it out the way and go do your job, you know? For sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. One, one thing I do want to ask, how good does that golden hat feel? Man, so good. So good. <laughs> it's like, at first when you get it, it's kind of like, it's a little ice cold. Yeah. And then after everybody gets it, you know, it's kind of, it gets warmer and warmer. But that first little, yeah. yeah. Especially after, uh, Especially after that one last year, that one was oh, yeah. one of the most epic OU Texas games because I've watched them from when I was a little kid, and I don't think I've ever seen anything like you know what we. Um, it was the the best of times and the worst of times for us. That first half, we were like, oh man, I don't know. I'm, and then coming out second half, you guys, man, it was it was one for the ages. And I know to to, to be able to stick it to Texas fans. Um, that second half was 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 pretty uh, pretty cool for me because I got a couple fr friends that are really good Texas fans and I was like and I always use the I always send them that 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 screenshot twenty eight seven and they're like oh come on man <laughs> that's all you gotta do bro that's all that's yeah twenty eight seven and they're like oh stop there's next year I said yeah there is next year you guys can lose another one next yeah. year so it, it's okay I don't know so, I'm looking forward to next year yeah we're, we're looking forward to it. Uh, right. so. But yeah, so we know we know how strong your relationship was with with Coach Riley and Coach Grinch and uh, that that former staff. Um, talk about what what that was like when you guys when you guys found out that that meeting and, and things like that, and you know your reaction to to them, you know, heading out to USC, and then and then ultimately, you know, when when Coach Bob Stoops took over and and you got to play for him in that in that bowl game. What was all that like? Because that was just in a matter of you know a couple of days, and so. Just, just talk us through, uh, you know, your emotions and, and that process, you know, for you and, and some of your teammates. No, it, it, it all happened fast. It really did. Um, I think that just sort of the way it happened, I wish it didn't have to happen that way. Um, I think that I definitely understand, like, the thought process behind all the coaches leaving and stuff like that. So I don't have any, any hard feelings or anything like that. But I think that just the suddenness of it and um, us not really being able to get an explanation before it happened and it just sort of kind of slapping us in the face. I think that sat wrong with a lot of my teammates, including myself. And it's one of those things like it is what it is. And in a lot of cases, um, we'll probably be sitting here two years from now saying that it worked out for the better. So um, I think that's the way that we all kind of see it. Um, yeah, absolutely. One of those things that probably worked out for the better on both sides. Who knows? So. Yeah. 
Sure. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, a guy being able to have Coach Stoops in our, in our back pocket and him being able to step in and say, hey, guys, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to come in and until we find a till we find a head coach, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to step in and, and, and help out my university because, I mean, he is he is crimson and cream through and through. And, I, you know, we've had so much love for Bob Stoops, but I think it just it upped the ante a little bit when he decided to uh, to step in and talk about that. What would that was like to be able to bowl prep and to be able to play for a, for a Hall of Famer like Coach Stoops and, and, and winning the Alamo Alamo Bowl for him? No, Coach Stoops, he, he's always going to have a good spot with me. Uh, I really – the more you get around him, the more, you know, you kind of like him. Uh, he was always one of those guys that was like – he was always at practice, you know. Um, he he always knew who I was, and he always came up and spoke to me. And I thought that was weird because he never really recruited me or anything like that. But just having him always do things like that, I think that our relationship has really kind of grown – now, you know, um, the other day I was kind of getting on his tail because he was in the training room getting his back <laughs> worked on. And I'm like, where are you getting your back worked on? Da, 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 da. He tells me stuff about his playing days and how you got to take care of your body. Like, yeah, it makes sense. You know, but um, yeah. no, I, Coach Stoops, like I said, he, he always going to sit tight with me. Um, just who he is for this fan base, who he is as a person. Like, it's just, I mean, <laughs> It doesn't really get too much better than that, you know. Absolutely, for sure. And it was it was good for him to come back and and, and get a get an extra extra game because I think a lot of us, um, you know, we have we always have high expectations around Oklahoma. I know the fans, players, everybody, and then you know, for the expectations it was at the beginning of the year, and then for us to finish the way we did, I think a lot of people just you got to stop and realize, hey, we won ten games, you know, and we won a bowl game. Uh, it's, you know, not where we want to be, you know, because we're always chasing the national championship, things like that. But that was really cool. I know I was a part of uh, being able to go down there and watch you guys and, and uh, you know, get seeing Coach Stoops come back and win, uh, win, a, win a bowl game and, and, and being down in that environment. I've never been to San Antonio, so that was, a, that was a cool, cool atmosphere. And then anytime we get to a little revenge on Oregon uh, was, was nice. So talk about that Alamo Bowl a little bit. How was that? It was – Alamo Bowl was fun. You know, San Antonio was cool. Um, honestly, that game was just – it was really – I don't know. I think I, that game kind of sits in my memory box a little bit above other games for some reason. I think it's just because of sort of what the game stood for, um, maybe because of where we were at as a, as a university. Um, but just having that game and the way it happened, you know, and with everything that was going on um, – it's definitely it's definitely a big one to me, you know. Well, I can tell you from a from a fan's perspective, it was really nice to see because I was I was up there and I believe Drew was too. And I was walking in there, me, my girlfriend, and her mom. I was super nervous because yeah. all this coaching staff stuff just happened, and you know, yeah. guys didn't leave, but you still had that feeling of man, you know, like what's gonna yeah. happen? Because like you win that game, no clue, you know. No so when we were up 30 to three right at halftime or something like that, it was yeah. like, oh, I'm going to get a beer. It's time to celebrate. Yeah. Like, it was like yeah. all of my worries were washed away. And that was when I knew it was like, we don't even have a head coach yet, but I know we are going to. No, no doubt. And yeah, that for me is like my worries went completely away. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. No doubt at all. And then. That that obviously brings us into uh, the future, and and it's now. And and you were talked about how excited you were. You know, talk about uh, when you found out when you guys found out that coach Coach Venables was hired, and then you know ultimately uh, your decision to to stick around at OU and not enter the draft, and and then obviously moving forward. Now there's a ton of excitement. We're fired up as a fan base, and I know you guys in in, in that locker room and and working out and city and all that stuff is, is getting you guys fired up, new coaching staff, and, and just talk about that moving forward. Um, well, honestly, what my decision came down to, I, I asked myself, really, what would be harder, you know? And I went with that. Um, wow. I came back really feeling like that. I mean, I, I could have left, you know, I could have been and went drafted, whatever the situation would have been, it would have been that. But um, – I, I kind of felt obligated to myself and the person I was when I came to this university and the dreams that I set and stuff like that, that like there was too much 
like unfinished business on the table. I left way too much on the table, you know. And so, um, like I said, coming back, it's kind of like a like I'm trying to. Um, I don't really know how to say this, but just kind of connect all my dots, or connect all my eyes, and whatever the term is, you know what I'm saying. Um, well, it's it's like a mixture, I imagine, of obviously improving your draft stock, but also you don't want to leave with any regrets. So no if doubt. you can finish out your last year, you're gonna no finish doubt. it out. So no, not at all. Yeah. But um, no. When Venables was hired, that made my decision honestly a lot easier. Um, it was pretty stressful for a while, and then. I remember there was word that Venables was coming in and me and Brian would be running through here talking about, yo, Venables coming back, should we do, do this, do this, do that? <laughs> and um, I can just remember how many times we talked about like, you coming back, you leaving, you coming back, you leaving? And like, um, you know, I'm happy for him and, and that he's leaving. I think he did, you know, what's good for him. But, um, you know, I was I was excited to come back to be able to, to really take take hold of this opportunity to do, you know, like I said, a lot of things that I want to do. What was your reaction when you found out Coach Smitty was coming back? Yeah. Um, honestly, I was, I was a little shocked, but I was hyped at the same, I was hyped and I was kind of like, ah, because uh -oh. I knew it was one of those things like, like what I said earlier about doing things that you're uncomfortable with. Like, you know, Smitty's the real deal and you're going to be uncomfortable every, every freaking day. Like, Every workout we've had has been, yeah. Hey, be honest with me. Are stadiums really that bad? We haven't hit them yet. No? We haven't hit them yet. Ah, okay. Hey, it's, hey the, the song says messing with Smitty in the summertime. Yeah, I was about so, to say that. Summertime, that's when they're going to get those steps. But, hey, who who knew when uh, when you uh, decommitted from A&M that you, uh, you were going to get Smitty after all? So. No joke. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't they were found me, dog. That's what it was. Yeah, he did. He was like, I'm going to get him. I'm going yeah. to get him. Where's Where's 23 at? I'm, I'm going to get him. Man, so. I ain't mad at him, man. I ain't mad at him. No. Real quick before I ask this next question, Sooner Nation, the link in the description of Horns Down Shop is going to be below, as well as anything. I'm going to try to link all of his T-shirts. Please go check it out. Pick one up. Help support our boy, Deshaun, here. And uh, that leads me to my next question. Obviously, the ceiling for this team, as it is any team in the nation, is a Maddie. What are your legitimate expectations for your team and not only yourself? Um, well, like you said, the Natty, um, that's the big overall picture. But I think that right now, um, just taking things day to day and having the opportunity to chase our best individually, um, I think that that's the most important thing. Um, the way that we compete really bit or really helps us to be able to do that, you know. And I think that um, us being able to be a team that's going to be able to compete at the end of the season, that that's going to be a big thing. That's going to be um, something that has to be a part of our identity. You know, we have to be a competitive team. We have to be, um, we got to outwork everyone, you know, and I think that that's something that starts right now. And, you know, when we get to the national championship, um, we'll, we'll be there. But like I said, it's one of those things we got to take it day by day. We got to just focus on being better and better and better. And we'll get there, you know? Yeah, that that one percent that Coach Venables talks about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we just saw that. We just saw those videos today that just that just came out. Talk about that and just just being able to have that mindset each and every day, um, getting getting a little better each day, and 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 not looking too far ahead. And then obviously, you know, putting putting stuff in the rearview mirror and and focusing on the expectations that you guys, especially you now as a, as a leader and you know potential captain on the team. You know, you've you've been there a lot, and you've seen a lot, and so you you're kind of the one of one of the leaders on the team. Um, you know, talk about that a little bit. Um, well, one thing that he likes to say is, is don't keep your eyes in the rearview mirror, um, and to be where your feet are. You know, um, it's one of those things like you gotta you really gotta focus on today. Um, you can have dreams and aspirations to do all these sort of things, but if you are looking too far in the um, if you're looking too far forward, you're gonna you're gonna miss the time to be able to capitalize on what you can do today to be able to close onto that goal, you know. And so um, I think that that's one of the most important things that I've picked up from him um, is to be able to just act now and do what I can today to be able to be better for tomorrow and then the next day and the next day and then whenever we get to you know first day of fall camp, uh, first game, stuff like that, you'll be ready instead of you know having been back a few months later looking down into the road like, oh, when we get there, I'll do this. When we get there, I'll do this. Yeah. But 
Um, rather, in this case, you're, you're already prepared. You know? Yeah, and, and preparation is, I think, a big key that, that a lot of people overlook is, is you, you don't win championships, you know, during the season. You win them, you know, in the sweat, in the grind, and when there's nobody in the stands. And I think that's a lot of what I've been hearing out of the program and you guys are, are have that mindset that, hey, we're going to go get this each, each and every day. And I think that's what, what a lot of Sooner Nation is excited about, that you guys have that building that mindset that says, hey, we're going to go get it. We're in this together. And, uh, you know, we got each other's back. So no, not at all. one of the things that I kind of just thought about was, that I wanted to ask you is what is it like to go out and win your conference? It, what, what feeling feels better when you see the confetti flying down mm -hmm. or, you know, getting your ring or like what, what feeling do you, would you say is like the ultimate feeling from what you've experienced? Um, definitely conference championship so far. Um, it's one of those things. Um, I could just imagine how it feels to hold a national championship, and I like I pray to God every day that I get to be able to do that one day. Um, but it's one of those things where um, it's kind of like in that moment. It's it's a moment to sort of you know kind of take a deep breath and you kind of really get to soak in and kind of enjoy the fruits of all the hard work you've been doing for literally like it's probably been a year a year straight since you know. The previous time we've been in that game, you know, from Oklahoma, we play in that game quite a bit. Uh, but no, it's one of those things where, like I said, it's it's very rewarding, you know, to be able to go through, you know, such a grind all year long, all year long, and then you get to a point um, to put your position or to put yourself in position to be able to play for the conference championship. And it's one of those things like not everybody in the country gets to play for those, you know. And it's one of those things that's also really special that you just gotta. You know, be thankful and grateful for. For sure. Yeah. So we we talked a little bit before we uh, we jumped on here a little bit about uh, you know you said you had some 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 studying and stuff to do as far as the playbook and all that stuff. Talk about your relationship now with uh, with your new position coach, Coach Roof, and and everything like that, and how that's developing, and what you're excited about playing in that that scheme, and and you know obviously you've seen you know the success that the coach Venables and his staff has had at Clemson and stuff like that defensively and. Um, you know, you were you were in a pretty good defense with Coach Grinch. Just talk about you know moving forward and, and the relationships that you're building now with uh, you know those guys and and Coach Roof more specific. Yeah, um, Coach Roof, uh, he's one of those guys like his football mind kind of like like it attracts me. Like I want to be able to learn from his from his football mind. Um, he's he's really technique sound, which is something that you know like we've been talking about details. It's it's, it's going to be something that's really big for us. Um, like Curtis Lofton always talks about how much he loves Coach Roof just because of the way he coaches us already. And we haven't even had more than like like coaching stations and stuff like that. And so um really excited to be able to get on the field with him and, and stuff like that. But um one of those guys that um or I'm one of those guys that as a leader he depends on me to be able to um get the other guys, you know, sort of kept them up to speed, um, help them up with the playbook and stuff like that. And so Honestly, like I said, I can't wait to get on the field with Coach Roof. Like it's it's one of those things. I feel like he's gonna like let us loose and just go be able to play ball, play free, play fast, and that's that's what it's all about. It's awesome. I know we're excited about that spring game. It's in April and it can't get here yeah. fast enough. So yeah, uh, you guys, yeah. spring practice got, like, can't get here fast enough for y'all. So yeah, so, that's gonna be exciting. It's coming. Sean, we really appreciate you for coming on, man. It's, no, no, no. it's been a pleasure, and it's it's been a really fun time, man. No doubt. No of doubt. course, if you, ever wanna, if you ever want to come back on, just kind of talk about whatever, you know, after the season or during, you're always welcome on our podcast, and we appreciate you. Say less. I appreciate it. Yes, Thanks sir. to Sean. Yep. Go check out his merch. Link will be in the description. And uh, that's been it. That's what everything for the Anything Are You podcast and the Chris and Drew show. I'm your host, Christian Williams. I've got my main man, my co-host, Drew England. Drew, you got anything you want to leave the people with, man? Hey, as always, thanks again for your support. Thanks for the likes, the subscribes, all that stuff. If you haven't yet, go over to the YouTube page, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, leave us some comments. Um, and as always, hey, you already know, it's Boomer! Hey, number 23, Deshaun White, Sooner, baby.